because of the um, technology uh, um, advances, uh, these days it is instant. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, at that time we were, you know, against the, we used to hear about Pandagari and those kind of things. Today we see drones, uh, mothers are crying for their sons and daughters who have disappeared and um, wives are crying. So the country is in a difficult situation and the whole world is watching all this because it's not hidden. I, I think therefore what delights me is that my former minister uh, recognizes that human rights must be respected. That is what he's saying, and he says the government is committed. I think now what we need to see is actions that reflect that, because the actions that we are seeing and the international community is seeing are contrary to what he's saying. So, um, and for me it is very, very unfortunate because I represented I was, uh, uh, I was ambassador to United States when our relations were flourishing. Mm -hmm. And they were flourishing because there was a belief uh, that we were on the right track and that United States wanted to support us to continue on that right track. Quite frankly, I don't know what happened. Yes. Honorable Keloria, do you want to do you want to first hear from these three, or you want to first respond to that <coughs> immediately? What exactly happened? And we are talking about same actors, same government of Uganda, same leaders, same the U.S. government, and and there's and Ambassador is saying, I saw there was a flourishing relationship. We were trusted. But I see something has happened. What is that that there has is happened? nothing there's nothing that's happening in Uganda that does not happen elsewhere, including the United States of America. Every government, institutions, especially security organizations, in all these countries, including UK, including Germany, including whatever country you name it, institutions of security on occasions make mistakes. And just like in Uganda, they make mistakes. Just like in every other country in Africa, they make mistakes. What's important is that when those mistakes are made, they are recognized. Those who are culpable for human rights abuse, those who are culpable for those mistakes, they are, they are investigated and brought to book before the court of law. That's what's important. The mistakes that's, that we talk about in Uganda, we've seen it, we see it in the United States every day. Every single day you wake up, you see these mistakes in the United States. In the UK, it's also random. In, the, in, the, in, in Europe, it's also random. But what's important in those countries, but we don't make noise about theirs. No, 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 no. When the American policemen kill black young men or, or, or make those mistakes, we will just watch here quietly. We don't interfere in it. Yet, these are direct abuses of, of human rights against individuals. Just like our policemen make mistakes here. Make mistakes. But what is important? It's just, just like in the United States of America. They investigated, and those who are investigated are brought before the court of law, and the law takes its course. And that's what's important even in Uganda. Okay. But the United States, as usual, have put themselves as if they're the policemen of the world, and, and against international law and, 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 and understanding, their job is to give lectures and, and, and interfere in the domestic affairs of other countries, and I do not know under what rights they do. We could have similarly, as government of Uganda, made statements against numerous things that happened in the United States on a daily basis. Just under the previous administration, just under the administration, the previous president used to abuse journalists openly. Trump. President Trump used to abuse journalists openly and even chase them out of the rooms openly. But I've never seen President Museven here in the 30 years <laughs> chasing journalists. But you journalists here, when Trump that does those things, you don't even comment about it in the papers. Oh. It's, it's all praise and praise and praise for, what? For, 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 for Trump. 
the, the issue of this uh, Floyd Maybe we fear. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> Recently, the, there was an attack on, on Congress. All of you kept quiet. Nothing about it. When Floyd was killed, the, no, no, single paper, it. no single paper condemned or came out in whole, pa whole pages condemning those things. But when it happens in your own country, you make hula baloo or, or jili and all kinds of noise. <laughs> yeah, this is your own country. <laughs> oh, yeah. But we right. don't interfere in their business. That's their country. We always ask them, please, we are the best people to manage this country. Yeah. We're in the best position to know this country. We know the history of this country. <coughs> we live in this country. We are elected by the people of this country. We have the full mandate of the people of this country. Give us space to manage our country. Okay. Good. Um, Councilor Sarah, um, I need you now to, to weigh in. We have had the, the groundwork set already. <laughs> um, but uh, Honorable Keloriam makes uh, reference to interference as well as uh, uh, touches on sovereignty. We are the best people to manage our country, which is true. And we now need to put it into context for the viewer out there. Do you think that to, to what extent is America or any other foreign country interfering wrongly with our own management of our affairs, in your view? Do you, no. do you read it that way? No, thank you, Charles. You know, under international law, there, is a, there are principles that govern sovereignty vis-a-vis -vis globalization. And we also have concepts of crimes against the whole world. And those are also commonly known as crimes against humanity. When you use the basis of uh, you know, the embodiment of international law, the UN Charter, the UN Charter under Article 99, it mandates the Secretary General and the Security Council to ensure that there is international order, peace and security with the global citizens at the heart of that global international order. So when you come under Article 7 of the Rome Statute, it clearly spells out what are known as crimes against humanity. They include torture, abductions, forced displacement, apartheid, wrongful detentions aimed at a particular group, causing, intentionally causing bodily harm, mental and health distress to global citizens, among others. The governing document, the, known as the Universal Declaration on Human Rights, for which Uganda has not only signed, but has ratified and enacted under Chapter 4 of the Constitution, spells out the rights and responsibilities of the state, of the citizens, the duty to protect citizens, the respect and protection mandated on all citizens, and the attached conventions, which Uganda has also signed and ratified, spells out the rights and responsibilities of states, of leaders, of citizens, as global citizens. Th th there is a question of sovereignty and interference, which is normally misplaced. Because if you go under Article 1 of the Constitution, it describes sovereignty. And under sovereignty, the sovereign are the citizens. Mm -hmm. Then there are components of territorial integrity. So for a nation to stand as a nation, you must have the people as much as the boundaries secured. And there is a responsibility to protect, which is in the hands of the state. So having given that background, I, s I also <coughs> wish to maybe inform our viewers that at the end of Cold War, states mooted sanctions as a measure for use against unacceptable behavior. Sanctions can be in form of economic or travel sanctions. So these are international instruments that are used as checks and balances 
mainly against crimes against humanity, threats of state security, unacceptable behavior of state agencies, and threats against global citizens. So having given that background, Charles, the questions of sovereignty and interference do not arise when crimes against humanity are in question. Because these are crimes committed against the whole world. And these are principles of international law and international human rights. And good enough, Uganda is very good at signing all these instruments and ratifying them. So we are committed in those capacities. Beyond that, we have bilateral and international relations that also govern business of countries. And these relations have principles and values that govern the partnerships. So when you come to what has been witnessed in Uganda, citizens have witnessed forced disappearances, have witnessed extrajudicial killings, have witnessed abductions, have witnessed arbitrary arrests, have witnessed torture. I see it in all media houses, victims talking, their families crying, the people in distress. And in a digital world, this evidence is there for the world to see. There's an African saying that pregnancy cannot be hidden with hands. So when you are in a digitalized world, where every citizen of the world is able to see whatever is happening in any part of the world, it's like if I came here and I'm seven months pregnant and I think the hands can, can cover my, my, my beautiful stomach. They cannot. So I think the, the right thing to do is to take responsibility, admit where mistakes have happened, punish the culprits, and show that as a government, you are still in charge of your mandate to protect not only the territorial integrity of, of Uganda, but to the citizens with their property. Good. Um, let, let me bring in uh, Honorable Mbide. You are on um, weighing of this situation from w your perspective. How do you view this, um, this proposed sanctions? How do you, and, and what's, what, what is your take of the fact that the minister says that these guys are punching in the dark? i.e. they are not mentioning the culprits. And why are they not? Because they are not very clear on what they are presenting. That's what the minister is saying, in other words. Uh, uh, yeah, of course, first of all, by, by the nature <coughs> of such sanctions, usually a list of names is not generated publicly. Mm -hmm. And, and that, is the the, that is the way that state functions. But that list is maintained to the extent that any intending visa applicants that are on the list, first of all, face the following. One, the non-interview policy for such personnel is extinguished. So they will be required for interviews. And two, it is very unlikely that they will be granted to take steps for entry into the, uh, into the United States. But let us look at it this way. Uh, first of all, that is meager and minor. It is not true that actually the intended uh, targets are suffering and uh, are worried about what the United States has done. Because clearly that step only has only one value, and that is stopping the said persons from entry into the United States, according to them. So for those that still have the liberty to access other countries, they don't find it extremely malodorous that they are worried. So in my opinion, what the United States needed to have done even is to invoke the Magnesium. What, what did you just <laughs> say? They don't find it? <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't find it extremely 
hurting to themselves. Okay. Mm. Uh, to the extent that since the United States did not invoke the Magnitsk Act, mm. that, 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 that has the, the capacity to touch even the very physical possessions by these people into the United States, they find it easy. It happened in uh, Nigeria in 2019. It has happened here. These are poor soldiers. I, 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 can, I, can, I can tell you that the reason is for which such members have been put on the list mm -hmm. is not entirely only human rights abuses, mm -hmm. but involvement into illicit trade yeah. of certain goods. Now, that illicit trade does not really describe somebody who is poor. So a lot. <laughs> so in my opinion, what the minister needs to know, when you read our constitution, uh, they amended the constitution. A lot of our people now do not know exactly what constitution we have in the, in the country. When you look at a copy of your constitution and you don't see Article 8, Capital A, that is not the constitution of Uganda. Now, Article 8, Capital A, read together with Objective 28 of the constitution, stress respect for treaty obligations. Now, when you enter into treaties as a country, and, and this one now goes to the Honorable Minister, who is talking about sovereignty. Entry into a treaty is an act of sovereignty. So sovereignty cannot arise as a defense against obligations generated by that treaty. And, and, and that is something that government should forget and avoid completely. That is the position of the law. Therefore, there are established standards for human rights respect that are international, for which our country has entered into agreement. Uh, agreement. We have acceded to treaties. Under the principle of Jews Kogenis, you have no right but to follow exactly what is prescribed within those treaties. Now, but the problem we have, obviously, is that we have again gone back to the era of the OAU. You, you know, during the charter of the Organization for African Unity, we had the infamous Article 3, which stressed the principle of non-interference to the extent that leaders of countries started killing their own people, but of course they were guided and guarded by a protective wall of non-interference by other states into what they call their own internal matters. Now, killing a person is no longer an internal matter. Yes. This is guarded by a protective wall of international agreements. So to the Honorable Minister, this is how you have done it. Because you see, we are discussing the United States, which is not represented here. Probably for us as lawyers now, we must tell the people that what they wrote represented the people whose lives have got lost, whose limbs have been maimed, and these are the people now we are going to talk on behalf thereof. Not the United States. When you look at what exactly was the logical necessity that made it, that the objective reason that made it a logical necessity for such sanctions to be established. One, for the actions that led, for the violations that, w that ensued, where is access to justice? Now, I can tell you that the fundamental violation of human rights architecture that has been adopted by Uganda as a government can be reflected as such. One, access to justice. You know, all of you here, that our local courts have become weaker on matters to do with human rights causes. Extremely weak. To the extent that now recourse needs to be taken from sub-regional courts. Which courts? One, the East African Court of Justice. That has consistently been denied jurisdiction to try human rights causes. That is number one blockage of persons from access to justice, yet the violations are continuous. Number two, the African Court on Human and People's Rights. That would have been a court of recourse for those whose human rights have been violated. What has happened? It is established by the Charter, the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, under the protocol that forms the court, that state parties should deposit declarations allowing their people to sue in that court. Uganda has never deposited that declaration. And that is a state intent against Ugandans from accessing justice in that court. Now, 
the courts that we are talking about, the ICC, it is very hard, actually impossible for an individual to access justice in that court. Because the Rome Statute that establishes the court thought about the following ways and the mechanisms of access to that court. One, being a state party that has to sue. I think that is under Article 14. Mm. Two, where the UN under Article, Article 7 of the Charter, Security Council begins investigations and therefore the culprits now find themselves at the ICC court. Then three, where the prosecutor of the court in proprio motto thinks by own impulse that actually there are some investigations we can have to take. Now, those three measures cannot benefit a multitude of persons that have been, for example, killed in Kasese. Except if, for example, organizations like what my, my land friend heads here begins to lobby, which is, which is first of all extremely expensive, to lobby groups until the UN Security Council begins to think about investigations. So, access to justice is completely blocked to the extent that the only justice available is that now that can be championed by the United States in a manner that so far has been attempted, but we think which is still less. Finally, I don't know what the Honorable Minister calls a democracy. I have consistently told people, we, in Uganda we don't have a democracy. A lot of people have told me that democracy is where, for example, one of the examples of democracy is that we hold the periodic elections in Uganda. Somebody does not look at the quality of elections. Somebody wants to tell me that if you look at a cup full of porridge, you just touch by mere feeling of the temperatures at the top, you think that is the temperature reflected by the porridge in the cup. Now, that is not called a democracy. It is a dictabulanda, <laughs> a democratula. <laughs> In fact, the, Mex the Mexican is called it the apertura democratica. Now, where <laughs> they, they are, they are, their election is held, but the quality and the manner in which they are held, it is a selection of some sort. Mm. In Uganda, all of this should be actionable. But where do you run to? The United States is only coming in. The Honorable Minister has just cited the people, the blacks that are being killed in the United States, but one of them, the c actually the accused has just been sentenced. Yes. That yes. means there is access to justice. Others are not state-sponsored. But here we are talking about people who are even promoted for having administered the havoc, mm. having obliterated almost a whole race of the people in Kasese, and instead they are promoted. That kind of condonation is what actually amounts to state sponsorship. Allow, can, can, can I allow the minister to respond to those very serious um, allegations that you express, and uh, especially both you and... Uh, and uh, and council Sarah, before I bring in, uh, you um, know, when it comes to the issue of of sovereignty, sovereignty is sovereignty. There is no country which has got a right, or any country which will sub will submit its sovereignty to any country, unless that country or that president is foolish. Even your, this country which you love so much, United States of America. When the United States of America, when the ICC chose to go and investigate crimes committed by U.S. forces in, uh, in Afghanistan, what was the result? Immediately they brought sanction against the chief prosecutor of the ICC. Immediately. And when my brother here says that they do not name, the United States do not name people who are sanctioned, I'm surprised. Uh, when when they named the, the, uh, when they put sanction against the prosecutor, the ICC, they named her. That was under Magnitsky. <laughs> so, so, but, but in the manner in so, which so we, in, in this case, mm. the United States is not even prepared. They are still here uh, with their spies and trying to investigate and get the truth of which individuals they should they should sanction or not sanction and have evidence against those individuals to justify their sanctions, because if they don't have evidence against those individuals. Somebody could sue them. They have a right to sue them. But Honorable so, Minister, Honorable Minister, so, just a minute. So the issue just, of sovereignty. Honorable, Honorable, just I want to follow up on, on, on that. And I want us, um, this is how I look at it. We have to be um, exp expressive to the viewer out there because they are our people. They are the people that we account to. Um, 
my question as a follow-up is, do you think that the United States, the Secretary of State, your colleague the other side, mm -hmm. would make a statement such as this, minus having those names with them? I won't be surprised. If, if he had... Has it ever happened? Listen, if he had the evidence, if he had the names of the individuals, why haven't he named the names of the individuals? If he had it. I'm sure the United States of America had the names, they would be the first to name them. And this was the first case. There are many cases. The, the, the other day, they had sanctions against, against Russians. They mm -hmm. come with Russian names. They mm -hmm. named the companies. The individuals they named them. Because they had evidence mm -hmm. against those companies. So why is it the case of Uganda, they have not named the individuals? Why? Because they cannot prove they're still quietly uh, trying to get enough evidence about those individuals so that when they name them, then there is no doubt that these are the individuals who committed such a, such a, such a crime as they allege, and those people cannot turn back and prob probably this, 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 be, uh, sue them. So, the, so the, these sanctions have been rushed, and, as I, and, I, and I've always said that the, this action taken by the United States of America has been based on press reports, has been based on NGOs uh, reports, has been based on lobbies and others who, 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 who uh, have, uh, have issues against the government of Uganda and, and, and uh, are sponsored by, 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 by those, uh, those Americans. And they have to justify <laughs> being continued to be sponsored. And therefore, they, they have to continue giving these reports. And, and uh, well, whereas they might be factual, but they twist it in such a way it's so alarmist. And, and the American government, without, first of all, themselves going through this, uh, these reports thoroughly and, and questioning the, the, the reports by lobbies thoroughly, they have rushed to make these this, this, uh, uh, sanctions. Now, they've made the sanctions and they couldn't name the individuals, which is very unfortunate. Okay. We are going to be coming down to the nitty-gritty of the issues that have been raised, the quality of, um, of our elections, and why should it be um, a, you know, a, a, a basis for this kind of complaint or the, or, the, or the restriction on visa. We are going to be talking about the issue of access to justice and whether it is like um, the Honorable Bombide says, <laughs> whether the access to justice is now being blocked in Uganda. We are going to be inquiring into all that. But um, let me first bring in Mr. Gobi, and uh, he, he, he weighs in. Um, wh what did you say? What did you say from which perspective? Your perspective, what did you call it? <laughs> Economic. A commoner. <laughs> you are not a commoner, sir. You are a whole don of a university and a, a, a top, one of the top universities in Uganda. Um, but we want to hear from you. These lawyers use so many big words, but don't get scared, <laughs> melodious, whatever they are. Um, those are just, uh, you, you know, same things <laughs> that we are discussing. What do you make of this, as a, first of all, as a Ugandan, but two, looking at it from the outside, looking inside, um, removing the this you know things like names or no names that there is a restriction on some ugandan officials who manage the state whether they have been named or not yet certainly they are big people by the time the names will come what do you make of that alone thank you charles um first you know i love to state things the way the average person sees them not in a bombastic way in, uh, in a way which lawyers urge out things <laughs> I, I know very many of my friends bring international charter <laughs> and uh, <laughs> all of those <laughs> dynamics but number one we had an election in Uganda mm. uh, uh, early this year which began late last year <laughs> an extraordinary election uh, which many years we have not uh, witnessed. Uh, number one, the, the candidates, or in a particular one candidate, 
that ran against the incumbent, the Honorable Chagulanyi, was a completely different character amongst the political actors we have known before. And therefore, he brought out a lot of things we had not uh, witnessed in the elections of Uganda for, for quite a time now. We had the head of state of Uganda, who is the incumbent, and, all, and who was also the, the, one of the candidates, coming out severally to say that some of these uh, 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 candidates are sponsored <laughs> by the imperialists. And they are here to destabilize us. Some of us who listen are not just hearing, took some message out of that. And then we saw a campaign which is uh, full of uh, a lot of violence. Because number one, remember this was a campaign during lockdown because of COVID-19. And the, the security forces uh, used a lot of that to stop the, the usual campaigns we are used to during the election. And the, let us all agree, we were not comfortable with the, the cam political campaigns that happened. Now, um, when I had the, when I saw the tweet, I first saw the tweet of this American Secretary of State, the new government there, talking of sanctions, I think I wasn't surprised. Because I wasn't surprised because number one, I I had the followed the events on how uh, Honorable Chagulanyi and his allies in the U.S. were lobbying the government of U.S. to actually act against individuals in Uganda. There is a certain lawyer, an American lawyer, who used to appeal no. Mm -hmm. TV directly asking for those sanctions. Recently, there was a journalist, I think he's a journalist, Amsterdam, who was on TV also asking for sanctions. So, when I saw uh, the, the new government yielding to that pressure and uh, impose sanctions, I wasn't surprised. That's number one. Number two. The liberals in the America, or the Democrats, uh, historically, they tend to have uh, a condescending, or you may call it a patronizing foreign policy. That's historically, compared to the conservatives. That's why most governments in Africa have uh, always had trouble whenever the Democrats are in power, they issue those threats and sanctions against them. They are mistakes not with the standing. And the but wasn't uh, one of our best re re relations with uh, under, under the Democrats, wasn't it under Clinton, the, the, the lady who was in charge is here? Yeah, but you also was one of our best other Africans had those word issues, they had similar challenges. That time, you know, Uganda was in honeymoon, as she has told you. <laughs> honeymoon. The, the, the events, you know, our, our, our only president was, I remember the New York Times put him on the front page in the 1997. And they said, the second statesman of Africa, when he was ma um, marching. That is after Mandela. After Nelson Mandela. Of course, those were the days. No <laughs> political challenge and uh, no issues we are discussing today. And now today you are talking of another Uganda now where there are a lot of uh, issues which 
the, the, the Honorable Minister is, struggle, is struggling to explain <laughs> as the lawyers are putting him to task of what government is supposed to be doing. So my point is the Democrats they tend to have that foreign policy which polices the world and uh, even within America actually w w when uh, some of us who, who follow those things the Americans always talk of uh, the Democrats being condescending, thinking that uh, they can uh, define the, the ideal world for everybody, including uh, uh, allowing all sorts of rights, and the people must respect them. You remember we had here a war also with America over gays. Mm. When uh, Trump came to power, that war ended. Mysteriously, it quietly, it ended. Mm -hmm. Now, Democrats are back. Sanctions. Of course, there are things we must address as a country. Human rights issues, abuses have increased. Nobody should hide their head in the sand and say, we okay. No, we are not okay. There are certain things I see today on media, I hear people saying, which I've grown up not, not seeing, at least in the current government. Whenever you hear th that story of drones, younger people disappearing, and you get locked up without trial, and then released later, that's abuse of human rights, mm -hmm. and it has to be addressed. But who should address them? And who should do ensure that we hold to account those who commit those? I don't want to call them mistakes. You know, you know, mistake is a bit mild. When you come and pick me up and, and lock me up, is that a mistake? Yeah. <laughs> it has to be a bit more stronger. <laughs> I, 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 I want the, the engineer of words to, 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 to the, the wordsmith to come up with the one which is more serious. <laughs> now, Uganda is a strategic partner of the U.S. We shouldn't forget that. Yes, <coughs> we are a strategic partner of the United States of America, and America is aware also that. China is rising, and uh, it's no longer business as usual as it used to be in those Cold War days when uh, after, after, after which they, they became superpower. And to now the power is divided between East and West, and therefore <coughs> saying that government has committed atrocities, but you are going to put sanctions on particular individuals is one way of showing you actually how the China effect is working. Why not sanction the government? And the government cannot be sanctioned, can it? It, it can. can. It the can. whole it government? Can. Yes. Yeah. I'm okay. talking from knowledge that, uh, for example, Zimbabwe at one time was sanctioned as a government. I know that creates problems for... A bigger problem uh, for the people. People who are innocent, mm -hmm. Mm. but either way you look at it, sanction is a bad against others. They tarnish the image of a country. For me, it would be the last resort to be thought about. Okay. I don't know why uh, 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 Ugandans can support America to impose sanctions on Uganda. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. They are very terrible things, and and they come to hurt everybody because. Those particular individuals, sanction that they are individuals, it sends a message mm. to investors, prospective investors, mm. to the financial system around the world that Uganda is risky. Mm. It's politically risky, and you know political risk does not have an insurance policy against it. Mm. And that affects the economy. And when it affects the economy, all of us as we are seated here on this bench mm -hmm. will be affected. They don't pick that, oh, this is the other soldier and the other policeman. No, we shouldn't support 
these Americans to do this harsh kind of decision. And you know, they impose sanctions and they investigate later. They are now investigating after imposing sanctions. That's how they did to these gentlemen in Iran. Imposed the sanction, then investi started the investigations. Okay. And uh, maybe, maybe since uh, you, you want your time back, I will come back <coughs> to tell you some of the issues I wanted to say. Which I, in a, in a you can finalize on that if oh? there is. Asante. I was, uh, I was uh, saying something on. Uh, I wanted to say something on these individuals. Why do they, um, in particular, interested in individuals? I have a feeling, because first of all, remember that most of these individuals, we are talking about government officials, they already peeps. You know pep? Political expressions. Politically exposed, exposed, exposed the person. Mm. Mm. And then you put sanction, which completely crowds them out of the financial system. Mm. Of course, that has impact on the individual. But at the end of the day, you will find that uh, uh, these individuals who have no access to, to this would uh, somehow have a ripple effect on others who are innocent. So I, I don't know. I don't know why America thinks that sanctioning is the first and the, the last resort at the same time. It should be, to me, the last resort. Mm. They should encourage nations to address this. Because we have diplomatic ways of doing things, the diplomats are too here on this table. Maybe we need bench. to start by asking immediately the minister um, straight on, did did the U.S. government contact you at one time, any one time, in this uh, process that these individuals are doing actions that are, you know, uh, contrary to human rights and to um, all these kind of values that we are talking about, and we are not happy with their actions. Their actions are actions against the, the, their own people and they should be restricted. They should be stopped from doing that by the government. And did government fail to do that? Was that ever done? Um, Have there been such engagements? First, first of all, let me uh, inform you that uh, we enjoy, in spite of all this, we enjoy very cordial uh, diplomatic relations with the uh, United States government. And through our bilateral relationship, we do we do uh, participate and support each other on many things that I'm, I'm not I cannot uh, talk about here. World terrorism, security, international s security, and so many other things that we we share among them ourselves, which mostly which are, 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 cl are classified. And I personally have a very close. Uh, I've been in this job for well over 20 years, and I enjoy a very close relationship with. Uh, the, the diplomats in the United States mission here. Each t even if each time they turn around, uh, I think that they leave notes behind that, uh, well, this Okelyam is still around, try and engage him, try and, uh, you know, use him as a contact uh, to, to continue developing our relationship and engagement. What has happened on many occasions, and which did not happen on these occasions, is that normally the, either the ambassador deputy chief of missions calls me or invites me for a meeting somewhere and, and gives me what he call, they want to give me a hands up. They refer to it as a hands up. Would like to give you a warning or inform you in advance, uh, Henry, that uh, my government intends to come out with such a statement. My government is, is intended to do such, such uh, a, a thing which will have an impact on your government or which will have an impact in the region or would have an impact in Africa. They always give me a hands up. But within two days, you'll hear this, within two days, you'll give up. But what surprised me on this occasion, that uh, the ambassador didn't inform me, mm -hmm. the deputy head of mission didn't inform me, and it just appeared in the, 
uh, in the media and I got it uh, uh, in the media. Uh, and up to now, they have not given us an informal, uh, an informal, uh, uh, you know, writing on, the, on this particular matter. There that, is no letter that has nothing. been that's sent in Nothing. That's why, formally. Concerned. that's why, as far as I'm concerned, uh, this, this statement was made in a rush. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, oops, uh, we, we, oops, we made, a, we made a statement, and, and, and they realized they cannot even give the names. Uh, which, which, which should have uh, been there if, 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 if it was well thought through, well researched, the individuals uh, that were, were supposed to be subject to the sanctions, uh, you know, were, were, were identified and their crimes n well noted and their crimes could be tested in the, in the courts of law. It didn't happen. So with our relationship, uh, uh, even in, in hard times, even if we have our differences, we have always been able to give each other advance notice if and such a thing, such an uh, 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 action was supposed to be taken by the United States, but it did not take place on this mm -hmm. particular uh, occasion. Okay. Hence, uh, we, we are responding from a proposition of what has happened in the press. And why I, I, we continue responding to it, because normally in, in diplomacy, or in where we, I do international relations, I, I normally don't need to believe in what's written in the press. I don't believe what's shown in the social media. I don't respond to it. But what made me respond to this matter? Because I saw an official from the United States mission appear on NBS, and he himself is the one who made the statement confirming about the sanctions. An official from the US government. So I said, okay, now if the US <laughs> government official comes on, on our national television and says this statement, then it must be, it must be true. And based on that, is that's why I responded. Good. Um, Ambassador Edith, is, is that normal practice in diplomacy or that uh, you can give the hands up but you can actually make the statement and go ahead and investigate later or, or like someone has just, I saw someone has sent a message, I will be reading messages at, a certain, at, at an appropriate time, but someone has just said, Charles, um, actually with the visa restrictions, they usually give the names to the embassy and yes. if those officials, um, you know, mm -hmm. want to go and, or, or travel, mm -hmm. that's when they will be informed mm -hmm. individually. What usually happens? First and foremost, I think the fact that there has not been a, a, a hands up or advance uh, notice to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs or through our embassy means really our relations are going down. Mm. It also means that probably they do not believe that these individuals are just individuals, that they are acting actually on behalf of the state. So, which means that they are losing confidence in the state. Because if I have acted, for instance, in my own right as, a, you know, as an official of government, then I can be put to order by, you know, the government because the other state believes that actually I did not represent well the mm. government. But if the government is of the view that actually this is, uh, you know, uh, this, is, this is acted on, on behalf of the government, they may not do that. But for me, it worries me because it indicates that actually our relationship is <laughs> going down. <laughs> we now, have been the other in, in, thing, in, uh, also we have been in worse situations than this. I want to inform you. Mm. We have been in worse situations than this, where they have, they have kept us informed. This is such a small issue that if, if the United States government were to use it to impact on the relationship, they will have far-fetching consequences which we could respond to. And they're not stupid. That and uh, just for this trivial issue that they will uh, put their relationship with Uganda at stake. Okay. Yes, Well, uh, well I, uh, you know, I think first, first, uh, first and foremost, I think the minister must also be reminded that it is our president that put the bar very high on sovereignty. 
when he addressed the OAU at the time yeah. and, is, and castigated his colleagues for keeping quiet when Ugandans were being terrorized. Mm -hmm. It has not been forgotten. That is the standard, actually, that we hold, I personally has always held my own government. In uh, your... Yes. Uh, yes. In your ambassadorial work? Yes. Even in... Yeah. And I always used to say it is impossible. Based on that statement which is... Uh, the and I'm glad that, she, that she recognizes mm. that the president of Uganda has a very high standard on the constitution of Uganda, which he still maintains today. <laughs> 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 that's, that's a good... A good uh, so, 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 therefore, mm. so therefore, uh, um, I think uh, it's, uh, it's, it's unfortunate that the, the government here is still uh, in a delusional uh, mode. They think, they know, obviously, I mean, the, the, the minister is a lawyer, he is well educated, he knows he knows that our rations are going down and they are going down what on or b because of what he calls it trivial killing people is not trivial uh, no, I, didn't say, I said the, i didn't say the killing i said the sanction is so trivial that it cannot impact on our relationship where but yet there are far-reaching issues so more important than just sanctions but i thought the sanctions is arising out, out of, of important issues to yes, them yes. but 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 yes. which but, would but, be but, important but, to but, us but but if if they if they felt that they needed to punish us honorable minister there, there is what we call there is what we call the if, cause if effect. they felt they they said that says all options are available okay this is a famous word all, all options are available now they could have taken far-reaching consequences to send a very strong message, a very strong message, mm. far beyond just sanctions. Okay. And also that far-reaching message, okay? Yeah. Would have far-reaching message would have would, should have been made by now. Number two, okay. I still come back to the point that even in so the, say, creating these sanctions mm. without the names is laughable. Good. Um, I I have seen. Yeah. The, uh, uh, the Ambassador Edith, I will give you one minute to wind up. And uh, I've seen the um, Honorable Mbide coming in. But let's take a break, very quick break. When we come back, um, the, the others will be coming in to uh, add to the points already in discussion. But let's break now. should stop you from finishing what's yours. That's why MTN gives you data bundles that don't expire. Load MTN Freedom Bundles using my MTN app and enjoy the freedom to finish your data bundles. MTN. Today tastes like a new tradition. Like an old favorite. Tastes like all hands on deck and all eyes on the prize. Today tastes like a piece of the action. And it never tasted this good.
That's their way of stopping HIV. What about you? Welcome back from the break. This is behind the headlines. And uh, this Wednesday, the 21st of uh, April 2021, we are looking at the implications of visa, uh, US visa restrictions on Uganda. And we are looking at uh, Uganda's international relations, Uganda relations with the outside world. This is a global um a global village now and uh, we need to be looking at how we perform and uh, if there is a, a mistake how can it be corrected we need to uh, always try and uh, have it going smooth where we can um discussing this we have the honorable henry okello riem minister in charge of uh, foreign affairs minister of state we have ambassador edith sempala uganda's former ambassador to the u.s we have Honorable Fred Mukasambide, MP for Uganda, to the East African Legislative Assembly in Arusha. We have uh, Council Sarah Birete, who is the Executive Director of the Center for Constitutional Governance. And we have our panelist, Mr. Ramazan Gobi, who teaches um, economics, economics that works, he has said, at uh, Makere University Business School. Um, before we went into the break, of course, the issues had become heated, um, but we needed to draw some context. What happens usually in the diplomatic world? Is it the way it happens that you can, you know, impose uh, certain visa restrictions on some, uh, um, you know, those who are politically exposed in a government minus telling who they are? Is that how it should be? Or is that an, an element of patronage or going against sovereignty of um, an independent country, a sovereign country at, at that? Before we went into the break, Ambassador Edith, you were finalizing on uh, you know, how the ideal situation should be. And you were saying that you think that without the minister who is uh, the, the lead Apart from the president, the minister of foreign affairs is the lead um, Uganda's envoy outside of Uganda. Um, you know, without him being given, you know, a, a, an alert, that means there is a problem, there is an ebb, a, ebbing of uh, our relations. Um, what then is government of Uganda, in your view, expected to do? up because it is clear that the issues uh, on the table of human rights violations are seriously taken by United States and other, uh, other countries and that they are actually visible. Everybody sees. That is what Ugandans are crying about all the time. So um, I think if, if, if Uganda government cares about relations with the United States, because sometimes they say it doesn't really matter, this is, uh, you know, we can go elsewhere or we, don't, we have other friends. But if they care about the relations, then they must do something about the human mm. rights situation in Uganda, the freedoms of Ugandans. Because... Okay. Clearly, there is concern, and this concern is going to continue. And I, I think they should also be um, interested in the, in, the, in the fact that there is an e erosion of confidence. Hmm, hmm, hmm. There is an erosion of confidence because when they highlight issues, then it becomes like, you know, but you too, you have these issues in your country, you know. But uh, Uganda and the United States are not the same. They have a system. They have systems that function. We have just seen that uh, the, 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 the policeman who actually murdered, uh, uh, you know, according to everybody, uh, uh, Floyd, 
is is now convicted on all three <laughs> on, yes <laughs> so we want to see the ones who who attacked Kasese being also convicted Rodney King was beaten 96 93 or 97 times Rodney King United States of America beaten by United States policemen over 90 times by buttons mm. and what was the judgment good all of them were acquitted those are, those so those don't th don't be selective when you talk of judgment or j j j j these things working, don't be uh, selective. E except honorable minister. Okay? I, because my, my if you're being selective, then they're not... They're not you're, 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 even, in, even in Uganda, there are many cases that the government of Uganda loses. Uh-huh. Now many. So I, I, our system works. You cannot just say our system does not work simply because on your, that day you had a bad day. Um, except honorable minister, in terms of the quality of... Uh, in terms of the quality of uh, argument, um, my, 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 I get a sense from what, the under, from what the ambassador is saying is that that excuse of saying, even them, they have, it's they excuse. do it to us. Because I know, or, or, in no, terms let of, me tell you, my brother, yes. if you are going to impose these so-called so, so sanctions yeah. or going to penalize people on human rights, on, or going to interfere in the internal affairs of, of countries. Do it equal to all countries. Yes. Don't be selective. But, but listen, listen. Yes. When it comes to countries where United States sell the biggest, the, the biggest buyers of United States, uh, weapons of United States, or the biggest traders where the United States, then the buy is different. When those people commit uh, crime against humanity, when they commit human rights, it's different. What we are saying as Uganda, is treat us as equally as all the others when it comes to issues that relate to constituency issues, constitutional issues, when it comes to human rights issues, when it comes to good government issues. Treat us just as you treat others. But don't be selective that these are our biggest market, our biggest buyers of weapons, and so and so forth, and you give, treat them soft gloves. But when it comes to the issue of Uganda, then you're dealing with bare, bare knuckles. Honorable. <laughs> The question will mm -hmm. remain. Yes. The U.S. has tortured the U.S. police. The security uh, elements within their security have tortured blacks. It is known in black and white. They do this, they do the other. They are actually the highest in terms of statistics above other countries. Granted, does that remove yeah what we have as gaps it doesn't mm -hmm. it so does not. that is what i'm saying it does not it does not in any form or manner because we are here to discuss about sanctions against uganda we are here uh, by the united states government it does not and i have from the very beginning admitted that we endeavor to do everything possible to make sure that we follow the constitution by the by the letter <laughs> we do everything to, to respect human rights mm. and wherever the errands or wherever the mistakes or whatever they, they what, whatever you, refer, you keep my brother wants to refer to as as then it is very important <laughs> that the government <laughs> the government investigate that matter yes brings it to book and those who are found culpable are, are, are imprisoned and put in jail and the keys thrown away just like in the case of this uh, military policeman who beat up uh, journalists when uh, Chalugani went to what? Chalugani. To, you, Chalugani went to impose what? When he went, he took the report to the UN. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When he took this uh, report called, to human rights, what happened? Chalugani. There was a beating of the what? No, the minister is a Luo, so, yeah, so your name is very long, long. Chagolani. Yeah, so we have to <laughs> reduce it. <laughs> so what happened there? We have to go, pronounce it slowly. Yes. yes. So what happened there? These police, military policemen appeared from nowhere without any orders. But the Instead commander who gave the orders is at large. Yes. But, yes. but the commander, the commander who gave the, the orders, all the journalists have been yeah. crying, but the yes. commander is at large. But he will, he will be brought to book, don't worry. He will be brought to book. Uh, when? But, but you see, it's a question of... My colleagues were hammered, you know, on the But, 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 but the, young the, lady fact, was the, the fact that the CDF came and apologized immediately. The fact that the, 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 those we recognize the CDF is, 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 is a beginning, 
but to rubbish it off <laughs> as if nothing so happened. Bad. I think it's being unfair. <laughs> <laughs> Not that uh, on, uh, Mr. Mr. Gobi is, say, is accusing me uh. that we also want some blood in in re <laughs> in return. No, we uh, we don't want blood, but uh. we would want to see that if a commander. Mm -hmm. who we respect for their training professionally commits a wrong like that which the cameras capture let, let against I, generally I, I, who I, I, are unarmed. I, 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 I for one, let me tell you. Or anybody. I for one. Or anybody else. I regret, I regret, I totally regret, it's very regretful and very unfortunate that these things happen. Yeah. And I should make it very clear. That's my position and position of government. It is very unfortunate and it should be avoided under any circumstances possible. Very, very, even what happened on 18th of November, mm, mm, mm. in spite it, it's being uh, a situation which should not have happened, we feel for those people who lost lives. It's not we're, we're not we're not human. We're, we're human. We feel we feel for those people who lost lives. We feel for the families who lost their children, and so on and so forth. Mm. And we wish that eventually those who caused the killings are eventually arrested and brought to to book and not left at large. There is no program of government that just leaves them there. No, no, no. There's no, no, no such problem. Except, uh, uh, and, and we, we recognize that, Honorable <coughs> Minister, except if I hear these colleagues of yours correctly, that they are saying, wh what is it that they said? Say the, the, the head that wears a crown mm -hmm. is heavy. Heavy is the head that wears a crown. Meaning that for you as a minister, as a government, you carry a heavier burden. I agree. That you should go beyond just feeling. Let feeling be for me. Even for me as a journalist, I'm not only supposed to feel, I am supposed to call you out. And that's what we do as journalists. But then for you, you are supposed to even go beyond and say, please, CDF, we accept your apology, but follow the apology with ensuring that that officer, whom we saw yes. is a colonel, should be taken to court and be prosecuted personally not as government let government not be the one responsible because now we have a law but why is why are you saying that all that those instructions are not given to the cdf um we haven't yet seen but let me bring in your colleague yes. we shall come back uh, to that was just an aside as an example of those things that we are talking about but uh, honorable Bombide. honorable minister i think let us have a distinction to begin with Go slow. Between, between what happens in the United States mm -hmm. when white policemen kill blacks and what happens here. What we are talking about, white killing black, happened in the United States even during the leadership of, on, of, of, of Obama, who was black himself. Mm -hmm. So here we are talking about condonation. It was not state sponsored. We are mm. in the United States. You are talking about individual criminality, where culpability arises against an individual that has committed the act. Now that is different from if an investigator, for example, was delivered mm. to Kasese mm -hmm. to account for what took place and particularly what happened after all that took place in Kasese whether that amounts to condonation or not. In fact, you can juxtapose the two with what happens in the U.S. and you will have a world of difference. So, Honorable Minister, these are two different things. Now, this is what we need to look at. And, 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 and Madame Sempala has generally created, he has given it a very historical perspective. When there was a time when African leaders enjoyed the aura of being called the new breed of African leaders. And that was because they made a lot of flowery speeches. Speeches punctuated with human rights and what, and everybody looked at them and thought they were actually God descent. Mm, yes. In fact, because of those speeches, a lot of laws were created. They also a lot of laws out of those speeches. <laughs> One of the laws that was created was the Constitutive <laughs> Act out of the OAU Charter which again changed everything. <laughs> that those that were so protective of interests in their cocoons called countries, within the language of those presidents, <coughs> we are now told that no, 
everybody must be able to see what is happening in your country. Mm -hmm. They generated economic programs and first the G8 mm -hmm. and what was now termed the Africa Action Plan. We know. And part of what was created under the Africa Action Plan was freedoms, democracy, freeing parties. Now, Africa Action Plan was an amalgamate of economic programs. And I think the protagonists were for former presidents. Abdullahi Wade, there was Botafrika, there was Obasanjo, and Mbeki of South Africa. They even promised their colleagues, the G8, that we can even inspect ourselves, thereby creating a peer review peer mechanism. Review. So anybody who looked at them thought they were actually serious. <laughs> now what is happening? <laughs> they are only recollecting that they were wrong then by promising democracy and fundamental rights. And, and this is what the Honourable Minister is indirectly telling us. That actually we were wrong when we said that other countries can watch what we are doing. But this America here gives us a billion dollars per year for purposes of sustaining our health programs here. A billion six dollars. That's three one point billion dollars per uh, year. Seven trillion yes. shillings. Mm -hmm. That's the, the, because he called it, he called, mm -hmm. the Honorable Minister mm -hmm. called it classified, but I don't want to classify anything when people are dying. We have That's got true. a relationship in terms, of, in terms of the army, which is almost majorly restricted to the SFC. I can tell you that all of those sponsorships, uh, and of course, exchange programs and military trainings, and of course. And we had a goal which we never. Now, these are people, and when the Honorable Minister talks of sovereignty, mm -hmm. then at the end of the day, when America only bans people from entering their sovereign state, mm -hmm. and he thinks it is wrong, then for me now I don't know <laughs> what the Honorable <laughs> Minister wants to imply. Sovereignty is, is sovereignty, even when it refers to the United States. So where do these people want to go? So what is happening, what is happening is that the list has already been sent to the yes, American of embassy. Yes, of course. What the, the, the Secretary of State only had to do was to describe the person is on the list. And he called them the protagonists and their accomplices. I don't know which, which words he used, but that was the understanding I have that all of those that assisted mm -hmm. and those that were leading and their families and, and their, their families, families. Yes. But, but please they should not go away they don't in, if they prefer to go anywhere it can't be the united states now at least bilaterally that is a good beginning now the european union has also already <laughs> passed a resolution mm. we are yet to know now which action has is going to be taken and uh, against who so oh no minister you will not again turn around and say they were they did not inform you investigations took place. They started in 2019, when even Nigeria itself received the same restrictions. <laughs> Today, we are only going to be reaping fruits. I can tell you <laughs> that where courts are weak, the best courts should be those that we enjoy parity with. Those that can give you food, even parents, because sometimes they give you food. I, I think you can go away with a slap when you are wrong. In my opinion, these are things that we need to do. Africa Action Plan failed. So there is no longer any accountability in terms of human rights available to any leader. Citizens in Africa have now adopted one major principle that fear is life. Because that is the only way. Then the moving is one is strong on the lips of every leader is democracy. We are everywhere democratic. And now we are beginning to see you must account for those things that you have done. When I last spoke to uh, the former president of Ghana, Jerry Rawlings, I, I, I shared with him and I saw the pain that he had. Before his death, he told me his account with the former president of Libya. And we were talking about our only president here. And he said, the, mo the most difficult thing, and which is not actually good, is when a leader fails to spell the word exit. Because even when such a leader organizes an election, it becomes a deadly contest when he is on a ballot paper. That means death, that means everything. Mm. He told me how he spoke with Gaddafi, and Gaddafi told him no. He told him that, you see, these people here need freedom to even choose how they should be led. And that even when you give them everything, they will still prefer freedoms. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. He used the example of animals in a zoo. That when you go to the zoo, every tourist gives them what to eat. Mm. The monkeys are given bananas. The lions are given pieces of meat. But if you want to know the difference between freedom and merely being given everything, just free any of the cages, despite anything that is inside, they will just bolt out. Because freedom is better. Because Muammar Gaddafi had told him that here we, ha we can't have a problem. Wind up, I, have, I have given these people almost everything. Now, General Rawlings was telling me that he was uh, very perturbed. That when the Arab Spring was almost all over Africa, for purposes that people were clamoring for, uh, they were clamoring for, for uh, you know, the fight against poverty and everything. In his own country, it was all about freedom. Mm. So, Honorable Minister, if the signals are not clear, <laughs> I think we need lenses that can magnify better. That I think these sanctions, this is just preparatory beginnings. Mm. These are preparatory. But under the Magnitsky Act of 2012, mm. that is when now we are going to have everything spelled out. And, and it is very bad. And the, 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 my, my, uh, the professor mm. has just told us it, it is going to be hard hitting even against our own people when sanctions now become serious at a level of government, oh. which, we, which is where we are heading. Okay. Right now, you can know that all organ heads that had the participation in this election, having the effect of anybody having to die, they know that their names are already there. Let them attempt by applying for visas. We will know. But what did the world mm. go? Yeah, but going. see, mm. I don't know wh why. <laughs> why. I do not know, understand why mm. the United States feel that the people are dying to go to the United States of America. Then why, why should they die to go to the United States of America? I've been in America for the last 20 years. And to be honest, given the choice today between going to the United States of that America is, but and going to Kuala Lumpur, I'd rather go to Kuala Lumpur. I'd rather go to Thailand. Kuala Lumpur is yeah. in Malaysia. Yes. <laughs> given why? the choice. Why? Pardon? The, 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 they have bigger they don't, bilateral they don't relations they with them. Bigger. The buzz, the, the buzz there, opportunities the atmosphere, atmosphere <laughs> are more comfortable. The, the people are more friendly. You're more secure in, in, in those streets and, 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 and than, than in the streets of, of, of New York. My, much, much, much better. So let, 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 ask, let, let me ask, let me ask the question again. To go to the of let me ask the question it's, again. It's very Honorable Minister. It's very sad. And, 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 this, and you think that these army commanders, uh, really, really, uh, uh, security officials who are, they are alleging that the, the one who was sanctioned really are rushing to go to the United States. I don't think even they themselves are going to the United States. Let me, let me ask the question again, Honorable Minister. So you did very well when you said that we can have challenges and that we admit them, we ensure that the culprits are brought to book. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let me now ask the question again, since you have just said that. If you go to Kuala Lumpur, as they call it in Malaysia. Mm. But there is a problem of the drones not being responded to. Mm -hmm. By the time you go there and come back, will you are going to Kuala Lumpur instead of the US still solve the problem of a mother, like on TV we see a mother crying that her baby of 15 but, years but you was see, killed? You, 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 will you put, that be the solution? You are putting two things together. If you are talking on the issue of visas to United States of America, let me tell you categorically, those army officers, those generals are not dying. And I'm looking straight in your eyes. They would rather go to their villages and look after mm. the animals and cows. Just like me, listen, mm. just like me, I'd rather go to Namukora and be in Namukora <laughs> village. Go. Yes, I look forward all the time to go to my village in Namukora and relaxing there rather than being Granted. in the city of New York. And you now, are right. when you talk of there, the drones, yeah, you are right. listen, when you talk of the drones and, and the people, individuals who are, uh, individuals who, you talk about individuals who, who uh, parents. Mr. Gobi is joking and saying, should they add you on the list? <laughs> <laughs> I have no, I have no, I have no problems forever, <laughs> because I, have, I, I, that's why I told you I would rather, I have, I have many, I, I would rather, I would rather. It's, it's you who are that, who are concerned and worried, worried about going to the United States of America. Good luck to you, but I said I would rather be in Namukora, my own village, enjoying my life and enjoying the atmosphere there than the United States of America. I, 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 I
I'd rather be in my village than be in the rest of America. For, for the record, for, for the record, now number two, now the issue of the drone. Now number two, the drones. And I, let's talk the issue of the drones. Yes. You see, the the drones are instrument of government with their use to apprehend and arrest those who commit crimes. If you commit a crime, no, okay, if you commit a crime in this government, in this country, you'll be brought to book. Mm. You'll be brought to book. And those who have been arrested by this government, we have given the names. It's been written in Parliament. My minister gave it to the P5 uh, countries. He gave it to the European Union. We gave them all the lists of the people who are in detention and those who have been released. Those names have been given. Those who are not there in that list are, are not people who are arrested by uh, security officials and by the this government of Uganda. The government of Uganda came out very clean in parliament. They said, these are the names of the individuals who have been arrested by the government of Uganda. Okay. My minister, Sam Putesa, called all the uh, diplomats in this country and, and said, you them. want the list of the people who are arrested? Here they are, very clearly. There are people in this country, like in any other country, who disappear for whatever reason, personal reasons, in their lives. Well, that's we do not know about them. And, the, and the, if it's reported to the police, the police will investigate. Okay. Good. Um, Council Sarah Birete, you wanted to weigh in on the, uh, on the discussion. Issues of, uh, um, we need to now start uh, um, um, descending as we are coming towards uh, um, a close. Um, what, what do you think that, uh, in your view, should be the way forward? Um, because like uh, the Honorable Mbide, Mbide said, that these visa restrictions are just a precursor to probably more, more, more issues. But I need us to also, as we wind up, we need to touch on our, you know, broader relationship quality, the quality of our relationship with the outside world and uh, whether for economic benefits, for business, for bilateral good relations and all that. How, what should government of Uganda now be doing in order to ensure that things do not escalate from just a visa restriction, as the minister says, to something maybe which is uh, worse? Yeah, thank you, Charles. I, I want to start uh, quickly, you know, respond to two key issues raised by, by the professor. One was that uh, the, the visa restrictions or sanctions affect innocent people. And that why, why are Ugandans asking for sanctions? I, and I want to, you know, juxtapose his concerns with families who are in distress mm -hmm. over their missing persons. I, I, the abductions, the extrajudicial killings, don't just affect the person who is missing. The families are in men experiencing mental anguish. They are in distress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the, the acts, the illegal acts of state agencies affect innocent people. Mm -hmm. I, I think that should be your primary concern, mm -hmm. that saying the sanctions on people who abuse rights, affect innocent people. Why, how about the victims mm. of the illegal acts? Mm. And these innocent people? Mm -hmm. if, if the missing persons, abducted persons, people killed in extrajudicial ways, we are your relatives, mm. how distressed would you be? Mm. We have seen distressed citizens on TVs. Mm. Women crying. Mm. You know, you can compare it to, to the period when Herod was killing children. I, in the Bible, I think Jeremiah. And then, uh, you know, Raquel wa did not want to be comforted because all her children had been killed. Mm. She did not even want to hear that, I sympathize, you know, it, it, because it could not bring their children back. Mm. It, it, you know, it's the same situation. I've seen old women crying. You know, wh when, this, uh, when President Museven came to power, I was a child. 
But many people looked at him as a savior, and, uh, and I hear Ambassador Sempala when she's talking with, you know, the vigilance. People thought that Uganda would not witness such crimes against humanity ever again. The spirit of enacting the Constitution, uh, and, and our Honorable Minister has been referring to the Constitution and the, the commitment of the Constitution. The spirit of the Constituent Assembly was never again. Mm -hmm. Never again. Never again will Uganda experience this. Never again will Uganda mm -hmm. go through turbulence. Never, right from the preamble. Captured in the preamble. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I want to come in on, on the man of arrest. Honorable Minister, people who have been taken by numberless drones, mm -hmm. by unidentified officers, mm -hmm to ungazetted places mm -hmm. are, are acting outside the confines of the laws of Uganda. The Constitution is very clear on how, even if a citizen is suspected of committing a crime or has committed a crime, on how they should be treated. And Chapter 23 is very detailed. And if I remember well, you could have been a member of CA. So I the commitment to the Constitution and laws of the land and when you say that law, the drones, under what law are we operating numberless vehicles on the roads of Uganda? Our traffic law is very clear. Mm -hmm. the, the vehicles must be identifiable, whether for government or not, and you have a, your own vehicle has a number plate. So under what laws does security operate numberless vehicles? Under what laws does security enter into people's houses at midnight? unidentified, faces covered. Mm -hmm. Under what law? Mm -hmm. uh, and is this something we should defend as a country, mm -hmm. regardless of whether you are in a power or not, in, or not? Because we are citizens of this country. You know outside the power. Tomorrow you might not be a minister. Is this something you will be proud of as a Ugandan? So when we say that we are committed to the Constitution, then we need to ask, and these are acts that have gone on. You know, a mistake can happen one or two times. But when you have some, I think abductions started in November, the, the height of abductions. Mm -hmm. So you have November, December, January, yeah. February, and the government is, is quiet. And when we come to the United States and the, you know, Professor kept asking, why are Ugandans mm -hmm. advocating for sanctions? Do you have to advocate for sanctions? United States is a sovereign country implementing their laws. Do you need to advocate for them or not? They are represented here in Uganda. <laughs> you know, we have a full embassy of the United States. They have legal officers, rule of law officers, political officers, human rights, human rights officers. They have security experts. And they are officially here in this country. They have values under which they are in partnership with Uganda government and the people of Uganda. If we think that the uh, United States violates the rights of citizens and they have no more authority, or they should not violate our sovereignty like the Honorable Minister is saying, he's a Minister of Foreign Affairs. Why doesn't he go and look at the record of US officials violating the rights of US citizens. And they also put sanctions on them. What stops them? This is a, a sovereign country operating their own laws. Actually, if, if you say Ugandans are advocating for these laws, I, I think the disappointment of many human rights actors is failure of the United States to invoke the Magnitsky Act. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and going around, because what are, tra what are, tra are, are travel restrictions? And I, th I don't think that we should be more concerned about violators of our laws than victims of our land. Okay. Okay. Um, let me read some uh, messages and questions that have come. Uh, the, 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 there is one from Eriasa, Eriasa Muchibi, he says, Charles, please find out from the Honorable Okelo Oriem whether his senior minister can step in the U.S. 
Um, <laughs> that's what uh, absolutely Eriasa says. Listen, let me answer. Absolutely, without a shadow of doubt. Okay. Um, good. Um, and then uh, there is uh, there is uh, another person here who says. Um, um, Charles, uh, my question is, uh, the, no, this is, uh, not very clear. There is, uh, a question from someone who says, um, is the minister speaking for himself or for us Ugandans? For us, we still want the money that the U.S. gives us. <laughs> <laughs> that must be a jobless person. <laughs> hey, Ugandan <laughs> still. <laughs> He's a Ugandan, no, you know? If you, are so des if you are so desperate, if you are so desperate that you are now, uh, want, uh, you, are lo you, you, you want to live on, on the money from the Americans, that is very unfortunate. Um... And then uh, this person has a very long, long... Simpson, I cannot read your message. It is too long. Simpson kindly uh, send very short messages. This is, this is a whole composition. We don't have time for that um, on a program. And you have sent it to so many different numbers. Um, I mean from so many different other numbers. Um, um, Edward Seru Chacha or Seru Kaka or something. Edward says the um, the government official, stroke minister, should be frank. What is government going to do to arrest these situations? That is the crux of the matter. Um, missing persons, arraigning civilians in military courts. And are this really good? It is one thing to state that American sanctions are not good or baseless, but it is another thing to correct the wrongs. Um, that's what uh, I am pushing for. Um, I agree with him that. That I agree with him. Yeah. Um, and then um, another one says, I agree with the Honorable Bombide, the affront uh, to access to justice in Uganda is an important matter to look at. Um, and then uh, someone here, let me see what's the name, uh, Umar Cheyune says, I want to know if uh, the minister is in any way concerned about the sanctions. Um, are they anything to worry about by the affected persons uh, specifically who are they um that uh, uh, is is the sanction yeah, who are they who are the affected persons i i that's that's self-explanatory i think <laughs> uh and then uh, chris gayaza i have seen your message chris again it is too long um um but let me just read w you have written about five four Paragraphs, I'll just read one. Chris from Gayaza says, one of the reasons that the Honorable Minister and other government officials are pressing the U.S. to produce the list is because of their personal fears of themselves being on the list. <laughs> <laughs> my position, I've made my position clear here. So, um, The Honorable Minister, Chris, the Honorable Minister says he would rather go to Nam Namukora, yes. Kitgub. I know his village, I know his home, I've been there. Uh -huh. And it is on a good hill, so with a very good um, quality of air. So he says that is where he loves to go. Um, and then um, someone called uh, uh, so someone called Doctor says, we tend to condemn our countries and make them look dictatorial. How about you suggest that those guys uh, to go and live in those heaven on earth palace, uh, places? Sorry. Yes, we have problems, but surely is there anyone on that panel who thinks that the U.S. or Europe loves us and want to develop us? Um, Dr. 
we we don't know the question is uh, the question also has your answer um and then uh, someone called uh, rafa rafa says uh good evening charles my brother i'm watching you behind the headlines thanks rafa um you know um uh rafa says i don't like <laughs> Rafa says, I don't like the color of your chairs. Rafa, we will talk about that after the show. Um, and then Muevesa. Muevesa says, I'm following the discussion. The minister is sweating trying to defend himself. Um, and uh, I like the professor uh, for putting them to task. Um, um, and then this, there is someone called Santos. Um, Santos says the Americans are just a bunch of hypocrites. Unfortunately, they are too rich. Uh, they are too rich. Um, why should you say someone is, <laughs> it is unfortunate for someone to be rich? You also get rich. <laughs> <laughs> um, but John, John, John Santos, your message has been got. Um, and uh, then another, quest, another message is sanctions or not sanctions. While the, the state of Uganda is obliged to protect its citizens, it cannot afford to let the haters bent on dividing her citizens on tribal or their appearance go unpunished let the u.s government prepare for more sanctions because more people will be punished um, um the rest of the messages are not not i cannot read the rest of the messages they are not good for for national television or for the public forum um, please kindly keep it professional keep it uh, sane and uh, keep the message sanitized we don't have to uh, send uh, messages that are not good um, and uh, um, there are messages that have come on uh, on uh, SMS um, does Sarah know that some Ugandans disappeared in Uganda, alleging persecution only to end up using it to get residency permits abroad. Such Ugandans would allege that they are being persecuted for being gays. Does Sarah know that? Some of our Ugandans were drumming up the killing of gays in Uganda. How many have we seen killed? Um, and then someone called Ismail says, the other message was from someone called Chris. Someone called Ismail, a viewer says, Charles, um, ministers or EM body language is not in tandem with what he's arguing. Kindly ask him what is, is he going to tell us? Kindly ask him what he's going to tell us. Otherwise, his body language is betraying him. I don't know what this means exactly. The message is not very clear, Ismail. And then um, another message here says, um, uh, Charles, thanks for the show. I want to ask, do you want to be a well-fed slave or a hungry free man? Um, the, that one has no name. And then this one says, good evening. I have a question for the minister. Our human rights image has been tarnished because of the previous election. Why can't government work and bring the errant officials to book? Mm. Dev Derek Chauvin, that killed George Floyd, was brought to book yesterday in the U.S. Why can't Uganda do the same? Um, I think we have so many questions on Twitter and, uh, on, and Facebook. We can't read all of them. I'm going to invite uh, Mr. Gobi to ask the guests a question each. And then we respond to them. We can, 
where need be we can uh, merge with the, with the questions or comments that have come from the, the, the viewers and then we wind up. Before I ask a question, Charles, yeah. uh, just a, a, a few clarifications. Number one, uh, the Americans this February were asked in a survey by Pew on uh, three of the key things that they feel uh, that their foreign policy should concentrate on. Number one, they said they are concerned about their jobs. Mm. The American government should protect their jobs. Number two, defending them from terror, the terrorism. And the list you had 20 areas. Promoting democracy in other nations was the last one on the list. Mm. They are tired of uh, seeing their resources spent on uh, protecting or promoting democracy in other countries. Mm. Of course, this has a message it sends around the world. And, uh, and Trump started with this, America first. Mm -hmm. That countries like uh, Uganda, must grow up mm. and uh, take charge of their own issues. And that, uh, when we say countries, we are not meaning some people somewhere that they will come. Us, here, we need to start uh, really changing the way we think about our country and ourselves. Me, I see a lot of us elite thinking that the white man will come and solve our problems. That's why I was saying that the problems we have in Uganda, we must find solutions to them, ourselves. And I stated clearly that we are not clean. We need to clean up our, ourselves. Mm. This, this election in which we have just concluded mm. was a bad one. And I stated it myself. So for, 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 for anyone to say, to think that now, when you go to America and bring sanctions, then Uganda will get better. Actually, it will become worse. Studies have indicated that sanctions eventually actually deteriorate democracy more and even make uh, human rights worse off. Gandhi studied what has happened to countries where sanctions have been put. What has happened there? Now, my questions. As you get your questions, someone has sent a message that please don't forget my message this time. This person has been sending messages the last three shows and I've not read. So, Honorable Minister, this person is saying, let me see, he's called Kamugisha Invest. He says, read my first message to the minister. But the message says, kindly, Honorable Minister, you check if your name is among the sanctioned ones. <laughs> if your name is there, Mr. President will remove you from cabinet. Please, as a Minister of Foreign Affairs, solve that problem diplomatically so that it does not hurt Uganda. Thank you. That is what the, some, the guy is saying. You read, read is not for finally. <laughs> mm. I finally read it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Kamugisha, thanks for be, uh, being an ardent viewer of uh, Behind the Headlines. <laughs> Continue viewing. Thank you. Mr. Gobi, please mm. go ahead. I will start with the, my good friend, Sarah. We brought in the international law. Mm. Who is mandated under international law to enforce the the clauses of the law. Is it the individual country called America a superpower? Or I, I would want to be educated on, on, on the enforcement. Who enforces the law? To Honorable Mbide, the recent seasonal challenges notwithstanding, 
What do you think is the state of democracy and human rights in Africa? Is it deteriorating or improving? Coming from where we are coming from yes. in the 80s, in the 90s, and the early 2000s, and where we are now. The, the curve, how does the curve look like on democracy and human rights? Mm. And the ambassador, um, you, you, you are the diplomat. What do you think is the best way that the government of Uganda should approach this embassy we have with the US to ensure that it does not degenerate into another state of affairs between the two countries. Mm -hmm. And to Honorable Riem, being the representative of government, when are you prosecuting the people who committed the mistakes you talked about during the, elec the, 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 the recently concluded elections, such that you can be in charge of the processes that other countries are now poking their noses into because perhaps they are seeing a gap. Thank you. Who do you want to start and end with? You are the, the, the <laughs> boss. <laughs> <laughs> let's start with the let's start with the on the, the honorable ambassador and then end with the minister. Mm. Well, thank you very much for uh, that question. What what is the best approach that government could take? I think the issue is very clear. The issue that actually made us what some people call the darlings of of the international community was that there was an impression that we were on the mend regarding human rights and democracy. So that the sticking issue, unless it is resolved, the issue of violations of human rights, state inspired, the issue of democracy is a permanent issue. So unless we address that, it will be very, very difficult for us to really, uh, you know, to um, to regain our good standing in the international community and our good relations with these, uh, you know, international actors. Because historically, we have really had very cozy relations with the, the Nordic countries, with the United States, with all countries, basically. So the question is, what happened? What happened is not in those countries. It is here. And as Ugandans who are here, I mean, it is very clear the trend, the trajectory of our democracy and our respect for human rights is very, very clear. And what we see is what the international community sees. So even for somebody to say that you, we are the, you know, we who speak about it are the ones spoiling the good name of Uganda. No, we don't want to spoil the good name of Uganda because we are Ugandans and we also suffer. The other thing I wanted to say that internationally there has been some kind of a debate how best to administer sanctions because no one wants to have sanctions which are meant to actually help damage. Mm -hmm. So this issue of individual sanctions is a new issue. Mm. It used to be states being sanctioned. But realizing that when states are being sanctioned, the ones who suffer most and are the, the citizens. Mm. So they, it is job, double jeopardy for them. So they came up with this idea that actually 
these individuals, if they are, you, because they normally hide behind the state and they don't get affected, yet they, they are the operatives, that if they are personally affected and their families are affected, probably they will think twice before they commit these crimes. So that is how actually this issue of individual san sanctioning individuals came about. Oh. And for me, I think it's uh, probably a good idea that the actors, even if they act on orders, they must understand that they also, there will be personal consequences. Maybe that can help. But to say, you know, um, the international community should not be bothered, you, yes, um, I think you said that the, ne the, the second uh, issue that Americans are concerned about is terrorism. Mm. The issue of terrorism has a direct link to actually, you know, violations of human rights as well. It does. And wherever there is insecurity in one part of the world, it can easily trigger insecurity in other parts of the world. So maybe the Americans are not uh, seeing the, 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 the link, Trump. but definitely there Probably is a link. <laughs> yes, but there is a link. Yeah. And the reason why countries are increasingly interested in the uh, respect of human rights, wh what uh, some people call sovereignty and democracy is simply because they also get affected eventually. Okay. Thanks a lot, Ambassador. Um, Honorable Fred. Uh, yes, uh, whether the curve mm. of democracy is, is uh, going up or going down. I, I have been trying to think about an answer. Y you know, somebody told me that a professor is that person who has gone to school for so long until he meets a sign post reading, no school ahead. <laughs> 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 now, now this, I have been thinking about a proper answer for, for this question. <laughs> My answer appears convoluted. But what I think is that it is not even a curve. Mm. It is a pendulum movement. Swinging from absolutism to democracy. Back. And from democracy back to absolute dictatorship. In fact, in most cases, the speed at with which we go to democracy is higher, is, is less high than the speed actually with which we go to absolute dictatorship. Countries in Africa are not uniform when it, when it comes to this uh, assessment. There are countries that we can say are heading to success stories, like Ghana, uh, South Africa, Kenya, where there is uh, substantive antagonism, but it is not majorly state-sponsored. It is based on, but, but when you know that we are heading there to democracy. When all African countries we are heading towards independence, all analysts now thought that was a period of constitutional, they, they termed it constitutional autochthony. We are now countries <laughs> thought that they are beginning to have self-governance. You sure know what? Autochthony. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> the problem with that, again, was that then those that we are now trusted with leadership, again, became even worse than those that had been, than the Europeans that had left. They turned these constitutions into instruments of oppression. They imitated and obliterated certain provisions to the extent that these became now proper tools for operation and torture against citizens. Now this is what has happened. Mm -hmm. Eventually now Africa, it is even laughable. I have seen the professor also making an analysis as to whether we can really have pro proper political parties that don't uh, have subscription. <laughs> they are even not ideological. <laughs> what happened is, is that when the, in a period of authoritarian rule, you only have two divisions. Those, the authoritarians and those that are being led. And, and clearly, political party, you can see that there is only emergence of two major candidates. The incumbent who is an authoritarian 
and the one who appears to actually carry the voice of the downtrodden. There are usually two, and it, it, is, it is usually what, is hap what happens. So what we think is that one, there must be very serious godly intervention. I have heard the minister trying to interpret that we are actually following the constitution and according we are democratic. Lawyers have been told that the constitution is a grand norm, which is not true. The new interpretation is that the grand norm is the presupposition that that constitution should be followed. Now that is the new state of affairs of, 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 of constitutions. So what we are looking at is not an intention that other countries should come and govern us by referring to the international. But we are now being guided by one major principle, what they call the Pacta Sunti Savanda, that when you, when you establish a relationship between countries, you are now obliged to follow provisions of that relationship. It is just like, like a relationship between a bank and a, and, 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 a, and, 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 and somebody who takes a loan from the bank. The speed with which you come to the bank makes you accept all, all, all provisions within the mortgage, the mortgage, the mortgage, uh, the mortgage agreement. Mm. The problem is that when they now come up to fetch their money back, you begin attempting to imply that actually banks are being torturous. <laughs> now, these, uh, these agreements, these countries go there. Somebody was, asked, was telling me that actually foreign aid is bad. It, it is actually injurious to African countries. I said, no, what comes first? Is it poverty or the debt? <laughs> so, so I don't want people to generalize, saying that Europeans are bad. And for me, I don't buy that, that, that kind of, of description. I want us to make progressive assessment of relationships before, during, and even after acceding to such provisions of, of, of organizations and, and, and agreements that, have, that countries have entered it. So my take would be some countries are getting better, others like Uganda are getting worse. Mm -hmm. That is the curve. Okay. Uh, Council Sarah? Yeah, I, I will first respond to the question from the audience on no people who claim to be... In just one minute? Yes. People who claim to be gay and they are granted visas. And, and, and my, my response is simple. The discretion to grant or not to grant visas is a sovereign right of those countries where you are applying. What they consider is their discretion, is in the, their means, either to agree with your reasons for applying for a visa or not to agree. So I, I don't think that I have control over that. I don't even know the allegations. I don't work with any embassy. And this is secret information between Africans and the countries that, that they are applied to. On, on the question posed by, by the professor on uh, enforcement means for international law, in, in summary, international law is governed by, by instruments. These instruments include treaties, conventions. At times, it's, re it's groupings like East African Community, COMESA, African Union, and others. And they have principles that govern them. And sanctions on, on member states that don't follow what is agreed in the collective. For example, East African community follows the principle of consensus. All member states must agree in order to move. And we have seen situations where there is a stalemate. Some groupings follow majority, normally it is two-thirds majority. And there are also provisions in case you want to, you know, to withdraw from that arrangement. But also, when you fail to meet your obligations, there are sanctions, and, and they go, they start with the simpler ones, like for example, if you fail to pay your subscription and membership obligations, then you can be suspended from talking in meetings, later you can be stopped from attending meetings, and later we, you can be expelled from that grouping depending on the nature of the provisions you're violating. And normally, all, all concerns are stated. When it comes to bilateral and international relations, for example, Uganda and US relations, there are principles governing bilateral partnerships. 
And normalities, the shared values and principles of the people, of the citizens, not just the leaders. Diplomatic relations are relations between citizens of states. They are not sacred relations between the people who represent those governments. So they are, they are shared values. Normally it's human rights, rule of law. These are simple things if, if countries are democratic. But when there's a downward trajectory of democracy like Uganda is experiencing, then simple things become complicated. We are discussing a simple matter of how to conduct arrests, which is clearly stated in Article 23 of the Constitution. Identify yourself as arresting officer. Tell the person, tell the relatives of the family where you are arresting them. Tell the accused what the crime. Detain them within 48 hours, produce them in court, courts of law. Put them in the gazetted centers. These things sound very simple, and they are laid down in our own constitution. So we are not violating American laws. We are violating our own laws. And this is the, 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 the subject of sanctions, our own commitments as citizens, our own grand norm, our absence of deteriorating constitutionalism, our deteriorating democracy. Uh, and, and maybe as I conclude, Mr. Moderator, the human rights standards of any country are descriptive of the nature of democracy in that country or society. Either its existence or non-existence. And what we are discussing today is the continued non-existence of democratic principles and practices in Uganda, and it's very unfortunate. Honorable Minister, um, if you want to pick on some of the critical ones that uh, came from the viewers' uh, responses, you can. But well, um, but as you wind up. I just want to Wait for I want to inform you that um, we will continue engaging the American government and other governments that we enjoy and have uh, bilateral relations with on uh, matters of human rights, constitutional issues, trade issues, and many other issues that. Uh, that we do normally engage them with. And when it comes to the issues that uh, they raise that uh, is of particular concern to them, we, we'll, ad we'll, ad we'll address them uh, uh, as, 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 uh, as, you know, as need be. But one thing I must emphasize as being in the government of the day is that one thing that the government of Uganda will not accept is that we cannot accept to be submissive to the whims and fancies of another country in the affairs of this country. We cannot accept it. That's the bottom line. Even in the United States of America, we cannot accept their lecturing, their intrusion, and their interference in this country. Irrespective of how much money they give us, we cannot accept. What we want from America even though we are not equal countries, is that we expect from them the basic respect that this is an independent country, a country, a government which has been voted into power, a government which is responsible for the welfare of its citizens and, is a, and doing everything possible to ensure that the rule of law is respected. That's the, ba the basic line. Now, as regards these, these sanctions, we will continue engaging them on the issue of sanctions, Eventually, they will come up with the names of the individuals of, of the sanctions. But I want to assure this country that there is nothing to worry about. These sanctions will not uh, uh, make Uganda disappear tomorrow. Ugandans will not starve tomorrow, and Ugandans should go around their work and, and continue as business as usual. If there is something to worry about in this country, if these sanctions were to impact this country, just yesterday, just yesterday, Uganda, the Uganda shilling uh, uh, became stronger against the U.S. dollar than they had previously uh, compared to last week. We're not talking about 3,600 plus. And that shows the confidence in which the business community have in this country. Just yesterday, 
you see how the Uganda Shidi became so strong amidst these so-called sanctions. <laughs> amidst these sanctions. <laughs> which is which a clear message that there is confidence in this country, <laughs> there is confidence in the economy. Very America. clearly. So these are indicators to us that there is confidence in this government. Just a few, uh, last, a few weeks, two weeks ago, we signed the biggest investment deal ever in this continent. The, 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 the petroleum crude oil pipeline to, to, to Tanga. If, if Total, Total which is France, if they are not confident in the government of Uganda, that, that, that deal would have been signed. But the fact that it was signed in the state house where President Museveni seats, that if he was elected on the 14th of January as the president of Uganda, mm -hmm. shows the confidence in which that uh, Total, <laughs> France, and the European side of Uganda. Otherwise, that, 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 that deal would have been signed. Total is France, France is Total. They signed that agree, uh, agreement. That's what the confidence I want to assure Ugandans that we are on the right track. And they should not, uh, these issues or the sanctions, we will deal with them. And other issues that come, come ahead, we will deal, deal with them. Where we, we have errored, or our security organs have errored, uh, as I have said before, we will make sure that they are addressed. Including this matter you told me just now about the, uh, the, uh, the military police commander, that, that is still of concern. We will bring the attention to the authorities. We will not die, we will not dodge or put our head in the sand uh, on, my, on, on matters, glaring, glaring facts uh, that, that they have to be addressed. What my sister raised here about constitutionalism on methods of, of arresting and how it, when they each should be dealt with, those matters will be addressed. As I said, that every institution occasionally may make, uh, makes mistakes, and it, the, what's important is for them to recognize those mistakes, correct those mistakes, address those mistakes, and endeavor that those mistakes should be repeated. Okay. You see? So mm -hmm. in that way, I'd like to assure you, Ghana, that uh, they're in, they in very good hands. Uh, business starts on the 12th uh, by midday. Uh, of 12th of May, uh, the, the, the new government will be as, the new government will be sworn in, and it will not be business as usual. It definitely will not. It will be uh, business learned on our history, on our, and and, uh, and and what we have been doing in the past several years when we have been uh, in government, and it will not just be uh, business as usual. We'll do it to do better than what we have done uh, in in the past. But I'd like to talk about um, time, time, Honorable Minister. We have passed. Uh, we are now into mm -hmm. Thursday. What did you want to say? I can give you one minute to say something. But, uh, but I'd like just to thank my colleagues okay. for for the, the, this uh, opportunity. I think that it is um, it is only healthy that uh, matters uh, regarding uh, our country that is discussed uh, uh, very openly. You know, this is this is the one country which. Whatever you say about this country, we have almost 322 licenses, FM radio stations in this country. And they all say all kinds of things. They attack President Museveni, they abuse President Museveni, they attack the NRM government, they attack every single minister, but we have not closed any one of them. 322. Yeah. We, have got about, we have got about 40 TV stations in this country. And if you watch NTV and you watch NBS, you'll think tomorrow is the end of the world in Uganda. I always watch NTV and say, eh, tomorrow I better pack my bags and run back to Namakora and hide. <laughs> because they never, <laughs> there's almost nothing positive that they come. But we have never closed NTV. And when you watch, behind, have never, and when you watch behind the headlines, you listen to very, very constructive discussion. Thank you which very, 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 very encouraging. <laughs> Thank you We very have much. about 50 publications, newspapers that come out in this country in all forms or manner. But we don't close them. And that is the, the, the freedom that this country enjoys. So when they say there is no freedom of the press, there is no freedom of expression, yet you have got 300 or so radio stations that none, their license have been uh, revoked. You have got uh, online uh, <laughs> uh, what, uh, messaging now, 100, uh, so about Your, 60. As we end. So I just want to assure, to assure you that if you take all this in perspective, then you realize that you are in one of the most beautiful countries in the world. We hmm. should all have a responsibility to making sure that it continues to be beautiful. We, the government, have a responsibility 
to make sure you have security, you have, you have, your constitution is protected, constitutional rights are protected, your human rights are pro protected, and all that you expect of government is, is protected. Otherwise, come 2026, we will not be re-elected. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for the passionate <laughs> plea. Thank you. And the passionate presentation. Thank you. Um, when you talk about the numbers, I always get reminded by your other brother, Mao. When he talks about numbers versus quality, he says, is it growth or mere swelling? So that is a good thing to think about. So now I know you are really the advocate of the, uh, you are the, uh, the, the, the devil's advocate. Devil. <laughs> <laughs> but you have just appreciated that when you went behind the head like this. I enjoy this show, I enjoy this show, and I like this kind of discussion. Open, transparent, and not uh, and uh, no issue. Yes. And issue based. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Thank you very much, Sarah. Um, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Fred Mbide. Thanks a lot, Ambassador Edith, for 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 Honorable Mbide and Ambassador Edith. Can, can I make one correction? Yes. When I was saying hands up, it's not a hands up. It's a heads up. Oh, it is heads up. Yeah, not hands up. Oh. It's a hands up, it means surrender. It's uh, supposed to be heads up. Okay, <laughs> heads up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Gobi. I want to thank so much the technical team that uh, stayed up too late today. Um, quite frankly, very fervent, uh, passionate discussion and uh, understandable, big issue uh, for, for, for the global community but most especially for our country, no doubt the message that is the take home is that we shall continue engaging our partners, um, all these people, and that yes, mistakes can be made, but what's important is the correction or the recognition that they must be resolved. Uh, this is our country and we need it better, not worse. Uh, thanks so much to the um, illustrious uh, uh, production team, uh, my producers, many of them make me better and they make the show a greater show. Uh, Maurice Mugisha and uh, William Odoch, Bill Zagaba and uh, Fred and uh, Ivan, all the other producers. Thanks a lot, uh, Margaret and the team of uh, technicians. Thank you all. Until next week, God bless you and uh, keep it here behind the headlines and uh, be blessed. Uganda has been commended internationally for her open door policy to refugees. Today, the country hosts over 1.4 million refugees. This calls for deliberate programs to support the livelihood of the refugees and their host communities. The government of Uganda, working in collaboration with development partners, has through the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development, developed the Jobs and Livelihood Integrated Response Plan for refugees and host communities to promote the social